Go on, Lord, let your fire fall. Burn up the idols of wood and stone. Go on, Lord, let your fire fall. We come before you, Father. We offer you our lives. Our hearts are on your altar. Consume the sacrifice. Oh. Pastor Roy Town, and this is the Living Old Outreach Center Morning Devotion. We welcome you to this wonderful time where we gather from coast to coast to lift up the name of the Lord, inspire the believers, and present the gospel of Jesus Christ. We encourage you to hit the share button and let us have a wonderful time in God's presence. Good morning once again to everyone, and we're so glad that you join us here on the morning devotional. And this devotional is presented to you by Living Hope Outreach Center, and we are located at 201 Whittier Avenue in the beautiful town of Denellen, New Jersey. We thank you. It's a one hop from New York, so to speak. You can hit the 114 bus, New Jersey Transit bus, it puts you right there. You can jump on the New Jersey Transit train and you stop off at the Denellen stop, three, four minutes walk, you're into the our building. We thank God, amen. We would like to see you join us one of these days for our services for now. Our services are on Sunday at 11 a.m., Sunday at 11 a.m. and then we are on the outside today 
We will be in the city of Plainfield, New Jersey, at the corner where the city of Plainfield, Piscataway, and South Plainfield meets. We'll be right at the corner of 7th Street and Clinton Avenue with our Gospel Outreach Crusade. Would you join us? Join us if you're far away, join us online, and let us have a wonderful time in God's presence. We are excited to be on the outdoor. This morning, we are getting back to our devotional on lessons from the widow. Lessons from the widow. This morning, our, our devotional lesson reading is taken from Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 7, sorry. Oh, I'm messing up your mind here. Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7. Let me put that up too. Praise God. Luke chapter 7. Praise God. It's number 11 to 17. I know 17 was somewhere there. Amen. Luke chapter number 7, verse 11 to 17. So we're going to look at the widow of Nain this morning. The widow of Nain this morning. Not much was spoken about this town in Bible times, but Jesus did a powerful miracle for a widow in this city. So this morning, let's jump into the reading. Remember, it's Luke chapter 7, verse 11 to 17. The word of God says, soon after, he went to a town called Nain, and his disciples in a large crowd went with him. As he approached the gate of the town, a man who had died was being carried out. He was his mother's only son, and she was a widow. And with her was a large crowd from the town. When the Lord saw her, he was moved with compassion for her and said to her, do not cry. Then he came forward and touched the briar, and the bear stopped. And he said, young man, I say to you, rise. The dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. Fear seized all of them, and they glorified God, saying, a great prophet has risen among us, and God has visited his people. This word about him spread throughout the whole of Judea and all the surrounding regions. This morning, let's talk about lessons from the widow. We're talking about the widow of Nain. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for this wonderful morning that we all are gathered at this long, long altar, long, long international altar, from city to city, coast to coast, nation to nation, simply to encourage each other to glorify your name, and Lord, to let the world know that Jesus saves. So Lord, we pray that you are blessed your word to our hearts and glorify your name. This is your servant's prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. We thank God today for life. I was reading in the news concerning a um, uh, tractor trailer, uh, you know, um, carrying a um, about 250, I think, 250 illegal immigrants. And um, I think most or all of them died. What, what, what's such a tragedy? Such a tragedy in our world today. Um, such a tragedy in our world today. Um, 250 probably families or so are mourning and crying for the loss of their loved ones. The woman on the widow of Nain, great story. You know, my brothers and sisters, as we think about it, we think about the widows and the widows of our world and back then in Jesus' day, it faced very tough time, especially widows that have lost their uh, breadwinner. Here in the story with the widow of Nain, she not only lost her husband, but her only son, her only son died. And she was in a state probably of shock. She was in a state of dismay, disbelief. Maybe she was quickly moving into depression. But I thank God for the intervention of Jesus. 
And the songwriter puts it this way. He says, when Jesus comes, the tempter's power is broken. When Jesus comes, all tears are wiped away. He takes the gloom and he fills the life with glory. For all its change when Jesus comes to stay. Maybe this morning you're a widow, you're a widower, or maybe this morning you just feel your life is like that of a widow. You feel empty, you feel dry, you feel lonely, frustrated. Maybe you're slipping into depression all because of the situation that has surrounded you, the situation you have to deal with. But I wanted you to know this morning, whether you're a widow or not, that the Lord is for you. For the Bible says, if God be for you, if the Lord be for you, if Jesus be for you, nothing can stand, stand against you. This morning, take encouragement in the presence of God. For he who has begun a good work in you is able to complete it to the end. So this morning, I want to encourage someone here in this devotional. Despite what you face, the Lord might be setting you up for a miracle. The Lord might be setting you up, hallelujah, for a breakthrough. Do not dry your tears. Dry your tears this morning. Lift your head, square your shoulder, and face life by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord is by your side. You will not fall. You will not fail. Hallelujah. The devil will not have an opportunity to laugh and to mock you. The Lord will see you true. I guarantee you that this morning. Here we find this widow of Nain. The Bible tells us that, you know, in verse 12, as Jesus approached the gate of the town, a man who had died was being carried out. So we understand here that the life of this young man um, was stuffed out, whether it was sickness, whether it was a tra tragic situation. He was now carried out lifeless. Along with him was his mother, and she was a widow. This young man was the only son, only, he was a breadwinner. In the Jewish tradition, the man was a household, head of the household. He was in charge of taking care of his family. When he passed on, the eldest son took on that responsibility. For this couple, they only had one child, and he was a son. And after the father has passed on, this son had the responsibility. He was charged with the responsibility of taking care of his mother. But then tragedy struck and he died. You know, I can't, I can't, I'm trying to picture the feeling of this mother on this funeral day, walking out in that city towards the burial ground, the cemetery to bury our only son because back then, widows were now at the mercies of their families. If they weren't living with a child, then they had to find ways of survival. And I'm thinking there are so many questions that might have been going through this widow's mind as she took her son to his final physical resting place. I guess she was thinking, what am I going to do now? How am I going to make it in life? You know, who's going to support me? You know, uh, you know, um, there's not much that I can do. I don't know much of the questions, but what I know, there were serious questions. There were stabbing questions in our heart. And maybe that's what you're going to right now. As you journey through life, as you journey through this week, as you journey through your days, there's a lot of questions that are flooding your mind and you're saying, God, how, how will I make it? God, how will I get through this? God, how will I overcome? You know, you're asking those questions and the tears are flowing. You're asking those questions, your heart is broken. You're asking those questions and it seems like everything around you is dark. You're asking that question and it seems like there is no hope. But that is where Jesus comes in. That is where Jesus comes in, my brothers and sisters, because at the crossroad of life, when we don't know where to go, the Lord steps in by his mighty power and he works miracles. The Bible says, as this mother 
as this mother was journeying, this widow, she was journeying out of this city called, this city called name. The Bible says Jesus was coming into that city. Oh, praise God. You know, you might be journeying, hallelujah, to a place of destruction, but Jesus is coming in the opposite direction. That's why this devotional is here this morning. This devotional is structured so that you can be lifted up, you can be encouraged, you can uh, be inspired, hallelujah, to know that you can make it in life. You can know this morning, hallelujah, that you can overcome the challenges and the tra tragedies of life. Yes, life might have dealt you a serious blow. Life might have dealt you a serious economic, uh, financial, um, uh, you know, material, physical blow. Maybe the sicknesses, the pain, the doctors have given you up. Uh, you know, maybe uh, you know, maybe you just got a pain slip. You're unemployed, and you just do not know what to do. And you're journeying. Jesus is coming in your opposite direction. Something good is going to happen. To your life today i don't know what god is going to do for you in its entirety but one thing i know that if you trust jesus long enough he will come true for you my brothers and sisters i stand here as a testimony of god's power god's goodness and god's grace i thank god this morning that god has brought me to a point where i am not afraid of life anymore for I know if the Lord be for me, he will always work out. I live by this. This is what I live by. Check this out. This is what I live by. In life with Jesus, everything is fixable. In life with Jesus, everything is fixable. And I want to tell somebody that this morning. You might not know how this thing is going to pan out, what your situation is going to work out. But if you trust Jesus long enough, he's going to come true. He will come true for you. So this widow, the Bible says, uh, you know, she was coming out of this city called Nain. It's but ter verse 13 says, when the Lord saw her, he was moved with compassion. When the Lord saw her, he was moved with compassion. Today, people, sometimes people do not care what you're going through. People do not care, you know, uh, you know, what's happening, the pain you feel, but Jesus does. So the Bible says Jesus was moved with compassion, and he said to her, he engaged this woman like he is engaging you this morning. The Lord is engaging you this morning. Hear what he told her, do not cry. Maybe those are the words the Lord is talking to you about this morning. The Lord is saying to you this morning, do not cry. You have cried enough. Someone say, when you cry, you wash the soul. Whatever that means, I want you to know that there's a time for crying and a time for rejoicing. And the Lord is saying to you this morning, whether you're a widow, a widower, or you're just an ordinary person trying to make it in life, the Lord is saying to you this morning, do not cry. You've cried enough. You've shed enough tears. It's okay to cry. It's okay, you know, to cry. It's okay to, to let God know how you feel. Let Jesus know how you feel. But there's a time to square your shoulder, lift your head up high, and trust the Lord. Jesus said to, you know, he told her, do not cry. Then he, he went to the guys who were carrying that uh, briar, and he touched that briar, hallelujah, in as much to say something great is going to happen today. The young man who was carrying that dead at uh, the body of the dead young man, they put that briar down and then Jesus spoke. Hear what Jesus said. Jesus says, young man, <laughs> he says, young man, I say to you, rise. Oh, hallelujah. Maybe you're dealing with a dead circumstance this morning. Maybe you have so many dead circumstances in your life. But the Lord is saying to your circumstances this morning, hallelujah. He's saying to the answer that you're looking for, rise. The Lord is saying, why can he do that? Because he is the resurrection and the life. He is the resurrection. Let me tell you, the Lord can bring dead things, you know, back to life again. 
This is what he did for this widow of Nain. Her resources that was dead, the Lord brought it back to life. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. The help that she needed from that son, hallelujah, that was now dead, Jesus brought him back to life. The Bible says that uh, he said to the young man, he said, arise. The young man got up, sat up, and began to speak, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. Let's, let's look at a few thoughts this morning from the widow of Nain. I, I just love this story. I love all the stories in the Bible, but some of the stories just impact your life. The first thing I learned is that from this widow is that Jesus understands our pain. Jesus understands our pain. You remember? The Bible says then Jesus saw this crying mother. Maybe she was dressed in black, head down, surrounded by people, and walking out. Jesus looked at her and he had compassion. Jesus has compassion over you this morning. Hear what the word of God says. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 15. Write that down. Hebrews 4 and 15 says, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity, but was in all, in what in all points tempted like we are, yet without sin. We have a high priest that understands our pain. You know, back in uh, in Israel days, when the high priest went in uh, into the into the holy of holies on behalf of the people to offer the, the the praise and requests to God, sometimes he did not understand the pain of the hearts of the people. But we have a divine high priest called Jesus who sits at the right hand of the Father this morning. And he understands what we are going through. He understands our pain. He understands our frustration. He understands that we feel like giving up. But thank God he can identify with what. But he not only can identify, but he can do something about it. So what can we learn from this widow of Nain is that the Lord understands your pain. People might not understand. They might not even care. But Jesus understands our pain. And sometimes that's comforting when you know someone out, uh, out there understand what you're going through. You might be silent. You might be quiet. You might be hurting silently inside and telling no one. The Lord understands that. The second thing is that Hallelujah. We can learn from this widow is that as she was journeying out of Nain, she did not realize that just a few yards from her, Jesus was there. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus was there. You know, you know, it, it, it's a great thing when you know that help is near. When you know that someone who can stand with you and has stood with you, hallelujah, they're there at the nick of time when you call. Let me tell you, my friends, what can we learn from this widow? We can, I can learn this morning that the Lord is near to us when we don't even recognize it. The Lord is near to us when we don't even recognize. Sometimes, you know, we go through such difficult times in life, dark places, valleys, and so on. And even in those times, we feel like, man, like, you know, I'm all alone. There's nobody here with me. No, no, but Jesus, like with David, David says, yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, David says, I will fear no evil for you are with me. So David was saying, let the dark places come. Let the difficult times come. I know that the Lord will not abandon me. Hear what the word of God says in Psalms 38, 34, Verse 18 to 20. Psalms 38, praise God. It says here, verse 18, it says, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saves such as being crushed in spirit. Hallelujah. Psalms 34, 18. God, hallelujah, he's near to you. You know, sometimes you go through life and you feel like, as you go through difficulties, God is far away. Have you ever felt that? You feel like when you pray that it's hitting a brass ceiling and coming down. But in reality, in those times, we do not go by feelings, but we go by faith in God's word. 
Amen. There are times that come into your life when you feel, hallelujah, crushed, you feel broken, you feel. In those times when physically you feel and emotionally you feel that the Lord is not there, then you stand upon what he says. You and I stand upon that word. And what does that word says? God's word says that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and he saved those who are crushed in spirit. So this morning, if you don't feel like God is near, it doesn't mean he's not near. He is near because he says he is be with you and I until the end of time. So what can we learn from this widow? We can learn from this widow is that the Lord is near to us even when we do not recognize it. And there are going to come times when life is going to deal us so uh, terrible blows that we feel like God is not even with us in this one. But the word says he is with us. Thirdly, we, we can learn from this woman that the Lord will move heaven and earth for us. God will do whatever he has to do to come true for us. The Lord will stop his busy schedule to give us that attention we need. Hallelujah. Like parents of children, we will move heaven and earth to save our children. The Lord, God Almighty, will do whatever in his power to, to help us, to save us to lift us up, to encourage us. Fourthly, we learned from this widow this morning that exercising faith in Jesus brings the answer or brings possibilities. Exercising faith in Jesus. Maybe the Lord has stretched you and I to a point whereby all that can change our situation is faith in God. Faith in the Lord. Maybe you have placed faith in people. You have placed faith in an institution. You have placed faith in your job. And everyone has disappointed you so far. If you place your faith in Jesus, he will not. Hear what the word of God says. Mark eleven twenty two. Jesus answered and said these words. Have faith in God. Hallelujah. He says, have faith in God. As a matter of fact, he moved on to say, Hallelujah, you will say to this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and it will obey you. Jesus said, if you and I have faith, confidence in him, trust in him as a grain of mustard seed, he said, you'll say to your mountain, be thou removed. It's time to move some mountains in your life. It is time to have faith in God. You know, when... Jesus stopped this funeral procession and he looked at that mother and he had compassion over her. This woman could have said, he's just another prophet. He's just another rabbi. He's just another person. Let's get on with this funeral. Let, let me get closure. But this widow at this point in time in her life, she had faith in Jesus. She placed her faith in Jesus. She knew that Jesus can do hallelujah, what he says he can do. Maybe she saw that he, he had raised the dead before. Maybe she saw that he had worked miracles and it was time for her to trust him. It's time for you to trust the Lord this morning. Maybe God has allowed the situation to become so complex that only he can work it out. And it is time for you and I to trust him. Fifthly, Jesus, what we can learn from this way, though Jesus can return what was taken from us. Death took away this son from this mother. But Jesus returned her back. I'm here to let someone know that this is the season that God is about to repay you and to return what the devil has stolen from you. Hear what he says in Joel chapter 2 and 25. In Joel chapter 2 and 25, it, uh, the word of God says, and I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palm worm, the great army which I sent among you. God is saying to you, the Lord is saying to you this morning, through the experience of this widow, the widow speaks that God will return to us some of the stuff we have lost. 
He has the ability, he has the power, he has the resources to deliver. And if you trust him this morning, like this widow trusted him, like she trusted him in her time of pain and sorrow, she returned that dead son back in. God is about to return some stuff that the devil has stolen from you. Finally, this morning, what can we learn from this way? That even in disappointment, God can still work. Even in moments of disappointments, God can still work. This mother was coming out of being a disappointed woman. But Jesus was coming in the opposite direction. Hallelujah. And she recognized that day. She learned that day that even in her disappointing moments, that God can still work a miracle. And I'm here to let you know that you might be living days after days after days of disappointments. Maybe today you rise up, you're like, is it going to be like yesterday or last week? And you don't know how things are going to pan out. I'm here to encourage your faith. I'm here to 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 encourage you i'm here to support you to let you know that if you trust jesus if you trust jesus in this situation that you're going through he will work it out he will work it out the lord has already had an answer have an answer you already have an answer for your situation i want to pray with you father this morning we thank you god for your word and for lessons from the widow Lord, there's sometimes in life, Lord, when we feel a pain, we feel lonely, discouraged, everything is coming at us. Lord, sometimes we feel you are not close by. But Lord, we know that's just our human, our physical feeling. But Lord, your word says that you're close to the brokenhearted and you save those who are crushed in spirit. We thank you, God, this morning, Lord, that we learn from this widow's name that you will never allow us to go through life being embarrassed as children of God. We learn from this widow this morning, Lord, that you have the ability and the power and the resources to bring back those things that have been dead, dead careers, dead plans. Oh God, you have the power to bring it back into reality. Father, this morning I pray for someone, oh God, who feels that they're at the end of the road. And Lord, they feel like giving up this morning. I pray for someone this morning who feel, oh God, like life had dealt them, oh God, a difficult blow. And Father, the tears flow. In private, they are broken, crushed. But God, in public, they put on a good face. I pray, oh God, this morning in Jesus' name that you will touch them, oh God. I pray for those who are sick this morning. Oh God, I pray right now that the healing balm of Gilead, Lord, will touch them. Lord, for those with terminal illnesses, for those with chronic pains, for those, oh God, with complications, oh God, that even, Lord, the medication is not even working at this time. I pray your healing over their lives. Father, I pray for someone to hear this morning with needs. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that right now, God, that you'll meet your needs according to their obedience, according to the faith that they put in you, oh God. I pray that you'll deliver that victory to them. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for all that you have done. We give you glory. We give you thanks, oh God, Lord, that we can learn lessons from this widow, the widow of Nain, Lord. Hallelujah. That God, even in death, you can work a miracle. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you.
days are the days of Elijah, declaring the word of the Lord. Praise God. We want to thank you this morning for joining us. We want to say this morning, without a shadow of any doubt, if God be for you, don't be afraid. Nothing will stand against you. Do you have a great, do have a great and godly day? Remember, put your trust in the Lord and he will not embarrass you. He will see it through. God bless you. Have a great and wonderful day.